everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizzie, and I am super excited to do this video today. Uh, I have been wanting to do this video for about five years. Uh, today's video, I am going to show you how to do a basic haircut on a dog. Um, this will be uh, an, an, an all-purpose summer cut for the most part, and you can pretty much uh, do this haircut on just about any unmatted, untangled coat of hair, whether it's poodle, shih tzu, westie, um, you can pretty much use the tools and the theory uh, on just about any, any kind of dog. Um, now you may be wondering what this uh, funny colored dog is here. This is Roy, and it is short for Roy Bib, and uh, Roy is going to help me demonstrate um, how I do uh, my haircuts. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of theory um, before I got into uh, showing you how to do it on a real dog. Just because I can show you the moves and I can go a little bit slower. Um, so this video may get a little long. Um, as I said, I am going to show you how to do this on a real dog, but just to start out with, I wanted to show you um, using my uh, color-coded eight zone pattern. Um, and I'll show you that on Roy here, and uh, then we'll go from there. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, this video may get a little long, um, but I really feel the content is uh, worth watching. If you're serious about dog grooming, I think it will really help you out, especially if you're a beginner or if you are uh, doing this, doing a haircut DIY at home. Um, so you can use, of course, this book is very helpful. Um, the notes from the grooming table. This is kind of one of the, uh, it's a pretty standard textbook if you go to a grooming school. Um, and it has, you know, your basic patterns and a lot of stuff to get you started. Um, but <laughs> in that book, you really are not gonna find um, a lot of theory. And you are also not gonna find instructions on how to groom safely, you know, an overweight dog or a blind dog or an old dog or a dog with, uh, you know, luxating patellas or hip issues, like that's just, is just not real world. You know, there's a lot of show patterns in there. Just, you know, quick example, oh, we opened right up to a pattern, a schnauzer. Like you'll find your patterns in here, but the amount of schnauzers you're gonna come across day to day, you know, it's not nearly as many as just mixed breeds with tangled coats who are pooping on your table. Like that stuff's just not in the book. But I love this book, it's great. It's, you know, it's great to have around, but uh, I'm excited to show you my theory and how I go about grooming with my eight zone pattern. So yeah, um, what you will need, the tools you will need to follow along with this haircut are as follows. And they also, as you can see, each tool that we're going to be using corresponds directly to uh, the pattern on this stuffed dog. Um, Roy here has generously donated his yellowy tan coat to my sharp markers here. So the tools you will need to follow along with this haircut are going to be, obviously you'll need clippers with a 30 blade because we're gonna be using guard combs. Um, oh, and I should mention um, all of these tools, um, I go into a little bit uh, more depth with the tools you'll need uh, in another video. So I'm not gonna explain all of these tools. I'll just show you what you need because I do have another whole video on, on the tools. Uh, so you will going to need clippers and a 30 blade. You're gonna need a slicker. You're gonna need a comb. You're gonna need a two snap guard comb, a four snap guard comb, one 10 blade, chunkers, curved scissors, um, a one or a one guard comb, another ten blade. I like a ceramic for the this zone, and then you'll need some thinning shears. So yeah, uh, let's get started with uh, our little demo, our theory demo, and then we will get right into the haircut on a real dog. Um, yeah, let's dive right in. Alrighty friends, let's do it. So, 
Uh, we are going to start with zone number one, which is our red zone, and it is our two snap guard come. For our red zone, that is the body and the legs, as you can see. So I start just at the back of the occiput, which is right here, the bone right here. So we're starting here. All this is red, and I go just to the edge of the tail with our two snap, and then coming down the legs, down the legs, back of the butt. So that's generally our, our first zone there. For our orange zone, which is our neck and undercarriage, which um, <clears throat> this is one length shorter than the two snap. Um, I like to go a little bit shorter, as you can see under here, and I come down the, the inside of the legs with a shorter leg, one shorter length. You don't actually have to do that, but uh, I prefer to do the neck and the inside of the legs on these two, on the inside of the legs. I know it kind of looks red, but it is actually orange right here. I like to do all of my undercarriage one length shorter uh, than my main body, my zone one. So this is zone two, is orange. Here, here, under here, and here. And then all the way up the neck. And the reason that I like to go shorter um, on the undercarriage uh, is basically, I mean, it's, it's imperceptible to owners. They, they really cannot tell at all that the, uh, the inside of the legs and the neck are one length shorter than the outside and the top. And the reason I like to do that is because these are the high friction zones. Uh, this is where the collar sits. So the collar is constantly rubbing. This is where a lot of food and water and they're sniff, sniff, sniffing around all day. Um, so this is where a lot of gunk accumulates and a lot of friction here and a lot of friction here. And obviously all the friction is back here. Um, this is where all the yucky business happens. So I go super short on the inside of my legs. Um, because, you know, and especially if you're doing country grooming on the belly, um, right here, this is a terrible zone for matting. You know, they pick up burrs, grass clippings, twigs, you'll find all oh, the things I've found in dog coats. So I like to go shorter on one length shorter. I really feel that the, the effort of using a whole other blade on that is, is worth it. To keep uh, to keep this, you know, in better shape for longer. So that is zone two. Zone three is yellow, and it is a ten blade, and the, that is going to be our sanitary and our armpits. So for the sanitary, it's right around the booty hole, and I actually do the ten blade. All this whole area, I do in a ten blade. And I also, I come right up the belly, all the way up the belly with the 10 blade, nice and short, super short. And I also take the 10 blade to my armpits under here. Um, and the reason I do the 10 blade on this whole area is just because, especially for boys, um, they're peeing here and this is just where, this is where everything accumulates. And I like to go super short and I've, I've never, I maybe do a little bit more on my 10 blade than some groomers, but I've never had a complaint on doing a 10 blade on the entire, this whole area. I, I generally do a 10 blade, nice and short. And it's also a very safe blade to use. There are some groomers who will use a 30 blade for the sanitary here and here. I do not use a 30 blade on the sanitary ever. Um, I have, I've never cut a dog with a 30 blade, but I have made little red, you know, tracky marks. I've, I've, you know, I've made marks with a 30 blade um, doing a sanitary. So I use a 10. I have never had a problem with a 10 blade. I've never ever cut a dog with a 10 blade. And you know, when you're, when you're going up with your 10 blade, um, one thing to keep in mind is a dog, obviously all, they all have nipples, usually six. Um, and even with the 10 blade, I have never cut a nipple with a 10 blade. So I just feel like it's a really, really safe blade to use. And also, part of the undercarriage 
is the underside of the ear, which is, you know, our yellow here. And I like to, you know, take the 10 blade carefully on the inside of the ear. And I'll, I'm going to show you all the moves for that too. So, so yellow, zone three. Here. Zone four is green. And I use uh, my chunkers to do my little tail. And I use my chunkers a lot under the chin because I like to have a, you know, a nice safe cut when I'm uh, doing the face and it takes off, you know, a, a good amount, a good amount. But if you do make a mistake, um, you're not cutting. So you can, you can fix any mistakes you make with the chunkers. You certainly can use your curves to do the chin, but I like to, you know, a lot of dogs are moving around, so I just like this because it's safer. So, so four is our chin and our tail. So five, blue. That is going to be for going around our feet, shaping our feet. You know, we're going to take these and snip, 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 snip around this. And you'll also see the blue around the leather of the ears. So, you know, our curves are going to be shaping our feet and they're going to be shaping our ears. That's the blue zone. Purple zone is our one snap. Now this one, just the same as I used a shorter blade on the undercarriage, um, I use a longer blade for my head. Purple is for the top of our head, right down the ears. And as I said, this is for a basic puppy cut. So I go, and you know, once you, once you get this theory down, you'll be able to adjust this to any length that you want. Um, but for me, purple and this zone, right down the ears. And I also, right on the cheeks. And a lot of times I'll take this right on the muzzle. So these areas right here. Sometimes with some hair coats, you don't want to take the snap right here. Um, but for the, a lot of times I will. If I if the dog is wiggling too much or if the hair is too thin, I'll do the whole muzzle. I'll do the entire muzzle with my shears. But a lot of times I'll just take, take my uh, snap and do a, a quick buzz on the face. So top of the head, cheeks, and muzzle. That is zone six. Zone seven, brown. My ceramic 10 blade. And that zone is eye notching. So the corners of the eyes and then root right down the nose. So, you know, coming right, right down here. Notch, notch, and then right down. Um, it's gonna be a little scary to use clippers on a dog's eyes to start with, um, but you will get used to it, and most of them are pretty good, surprisingly. Like, you know, imagine how scary it must be to have this thing, you know, coming towards your eye. Um, but most dogs do pretty well for it, and, they, and it gets a nice clean finish. Um, and some, like I said, I, I use the 10 blade, uh, but a lot of times, if they have a white coat or a really, really thin coat, I'll use a seven blade for my nose. You. Um, just because it leaves it a little bit longer. But most of the time I'm, I'm using the template. That's it for zone seven. Zone eight is black, and that is for the bridge right here, the eye, the eyebrows, and then a lot of finishing work right here in this area is all gonna be thinning shears. And also, I mean, most of the body is technically black because you'll be you'll be snip snipping snip snipping all over with these um but you know i use these every day you know to shape my eyebrows and uh to hit these areas right here so so we'll just go over so those are the, the basic gist of the zones and where the placement starts so i'll just go over a little bit of uh how i hold my clippers while i'm working so Zone one, our two snap, and it's a three eighths inch, which, I mean, when you're using this, it pretty much leaves the body about this length, so it's kind of good. So when you snap this on, 
you're starting on your body. Um, and I did these in the, in the rainbow order because this is the exact order that I do my haircuts in. I start with the body, um, work my way down and back, and I do my, all of my face work last. I prefer to do my, a lot of groomers, they like to do their face to get it out of the way. Um, I personally prefer to do my ears and face last. Kind of, it's basically because it's my favorite part and I just like to make sure my haircut is done and ready to go and then I can really focus and do a good job on my face. Um, and like I said, I like to get all my feet, all the real, really wiggly stuff like out of the way first so then I can really focus on that. Um, so when you pop your, pop your clippers on, or I'm sorry, pop your uh, guard comb on your 30 blade, you're taking your clippers and you're holding it like this and always you're pointing your clippers in the direction of the hair growth. 99% of your clipper work will be going with the direction of the hair. 90%. Did I say 90 or 99? A lot of it. <laughs> Most of your clipping will be with the direction of the hair. So you're coming down and you're coming down all the way here, down on the belly, down on the legs. Um, there are some instances where you will flip your clippers and do reverse. Um, some coolers don't use reverse clipper, but I, I've never had an issue with it. Um, I use it a lot on really sparse coats. I use it a lot on Yorkies. And I use this, the reverse move, um, particularly on the inside of my legs. And the reason for that and the reason you want to be real careful about the direction of which way your clipper is going are basically because um, when you go in reverse, whatever guard comb, or that works for any blade too, any blade or uh, any guard comb, when you go in reverse, you are cutting the hair two lengths shorter than the guard is going the proper, or you know, the, with the direction of the hair. So when you're going against, that is two lengths shorter. So, you know, if you're going along and you're doing, you know, 10 millimeters and you, I mean, it's hard to do accidentally, but if you're going along and then you accidentally go backwards, this whole section that you hit, two lengths short, shorter, so shave. So always with the direction of the hair. And you're keeping uh, your guard comb flat flat and with the direction of the hair. Um, for the most part, a lot, you know, it's basically cur curving down like this for the most part. Some dogs, a lot of spaniels, cocker spaniels, springers, that kind of thing, a lot of spaniels, they have a tricky kind of coat and it kind of turns, it kind of turns sideways on you. So you just really have to, not all dog, not all hair coats are going to be doing the same thing. So you're going to be paying attention to each one individually. Um, and if you come, if you come straight across a coat like that, where the hair is kind of sideways, you're going to make big ugly lines. So you really want to be really careful about following the direction of the coat. So come all the way down here, and this, and this, all the way, all the way, and I start right behind the ears. I do all of this, all of this, and I obviously I leave out my neck and the inside of the legs, because that's zone two. So zone one, body, top of the legs. Okay, zone two. Our four snap is orange, and it is one length shorter. And as I just mentioned, that is the undercarriage. It is the underside of the chin. And that move, is always with the hair. It is scoop and scoop. And sometimes if they're really messy, I will do a reverse clip right here, like just in this area, super short. It's imperceptible. Like if they have a lot of collar mats, I just whoop, I haul off and I do all, you know, almost to the skin under there. Cause it's imperceptible and it's, you know, when they get those throat mats, oof, you don't, you just don't want it. So under and that comes our shorter blade comes all the way down and it goes on the inside of the legs 
inside of the legs. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I will lift up the dog's leg like this, and I'll hit it like this, scoop downwards. And you really want to be careful when you lift up a dog's leg. Um, you basically don't, obviously don't want to lift it much higher than the back, you know, where the back sits. Um, so if they do, if they're obese, or they have hip or patella issues, um, and you can't scoop down, you can't fit your clippers under here, um, I make this move a lot. When I go reverse, I will scoop in reverse. And I pretty much, I pretty much do the, uh, the scooping in reverse on just about all of my grooms. Because like I said, I like this area, everything here to be super short. And I've never had anybody complain that this area was too short. So I very often hit this in reverse to take it all the way down. So, zone two, orange, obviously, um, undercarriage, inside, and also I have a tiny bit of orange on the inside of the ears, because um, a lot of times if they have super thick or matted ears, I'll just take this on the outside and just do a quick scan. Just a quick scan, you don't have to, and, um, that being said, when I use the word scan, I just mean lightly. You're not light, light scan, light scan, and then when you are using your clippers, um, you're not pushing down on the dog. You know, it's very, very light. You're just, just touching the skin. Um, so you're coming down the back, you know, very, very lightly. You don't need to be pushing too hard into the dog, you know, especially you know, right here, they're sensitive, and if you, you know, knock into their elbow, they can jump on you. So you just want to be real careful, you know. They just, it they doesn't need to be real hard against their skin. All right, that is our undercarriage. Zone two. Zone three, a very important area, our yellow zone, which is our sanitary. We are using a 10 blade and for my sanitaries um, I like this whole area to be done in a 10 blade um, basically it's a scoop motion it's a start and flat and then curving upwards towards the tail and sometimes as soon as you as soon as you lift up the tail to do this part of the sanitary the dog will sit right down on you because they don't really care for that part so I usually I will uh, stick my arm right under them if they do that I'll try to do it here <laughs> i hold their little tail up and i hold their back end up just like this and then you can hit their buoy just like this now a, a precaution um, when you're doing your sanitaries a lot of times they'll have poop right here and uh, that can get in the teeth of your blade there so you want to just uh if you do get poop on it you want to hit it with some alcohol and do a quick clean especially if you're doing a lady dog, um, obviously the vagina is right here and that is part of the sanitary. Cleaning the penis and the vagina off are part of the sanitary. And uh, if you do get poo on it, you don't want to immediately take that and then put it right on a lady business, right on the lady business. Because um, it's, it's a rare thing, but you could actually cause a, a UTI and you, you definitely don't want to do that. So, you know, I'm scooping, I start sideways parallel and then I scoop up horizontally and then I will usually do this move I will hold, depending on the dog's range of motion um, a lot of times it's easier to come under under this way and scoop this way but if they don't have a lot of range of motion um, you can actually you can go both ways you can come down so you can either scoop this way while you're holding their leg up again not too high you know, especially if they have, you know, sometimes you can feel their little knees pop. So just be careful. And if the dog starts to tip or really shows that it's uncomfortable, you know, just try to, you know, do the best you can. But most dogs are pretty good. They can, they can have their legs lifted up this high. So you're going scoop and scoop. And also part of my sanitaries are the armpits of the dog. You can see the yellow here. And that's just, you know, lifting up the front leg and your scoop, you just hit it just like that. And scoop and scoop and a lot of times you're gonna find mats hiding under there that's actually the reason for that I don't know if a lot of groomers do a 10 blade in the armpit 
but I do a ton of blade on every single armpit, never had a complaint. It's, you can't see it, you know, you can't see it at all. Um, so, and then I will take the dog, most of them, by the front feet, just like this, and I'll lift them up. Most of them are just fine with that. Uh, although, you know, if, again, if they're overweight or if they have bad hips or if they're just really scared or if they're puppies and puppies are just clueless, they have to be taught how to do all of this. You just lift it right up and then, as you can see, how much yellow I have, I have a lot of yellow. So all of this is my sanitary. I come all the way up to the sternum. All of it comes off with a 10 blade. I like it really short under there and like I said, I really never have any complaints about how short I do my sanitary. Um, um, the 10 blade is very safe. I have never cut a dog with a 10 blade. I highly recommend it's the only blade you use for sanitaries. Some groomers do use a 30 blade, um, but I have seen 30 blades nick skin and I've seen them leave little red dots, little teeth track marks, and I just don't like the 30 blade for sanitaries. I love the 10. And also part of my sanitary is the inside of the ears. Um, now, this may come as a surprise but to some groomers, but I do not pluck ears on 99% of my dogs. I do not like to pluck ears. Um, sometimes you'll, you know, if somebody does request ear plucking, I charge extra for it. I'll use my little rosin powder, uh, which is, a, you know, a powder made from, uh, tree resin and it is used to you know give you traction um, on the ears on the, the ear hair when you're when you're plucking um, the reason I don't like to pluck ears um, it's just too painful and for the dogs they don't like it a lot of times once you pluck they won't let you anywhere near their ears and you know a lot of the plucking really started in show rings I feel you know dogs that are groomed regularly and have their ears plucked regularly those aren't the kind of dogs I'm generally doing. You know, most of the dogs I'm doing, nobody even looks at the inside of their ears um, for several weeks. So I do not pluck ears. I just take my 10 blade, I pull the hair out, and I just do a whoop, whoop. Just a quick, you know, quick trim with the 10. That's part of my sanitary. All right, that's our yellow sanitary zone. Green, which is zone four, and that is for our tail. And right under here, shaping our chin. You know, for most of your tails, most of your tails are gonna be fan tails, um, which is basically just combing the hair, you know, part right down the middle, comb, comb. Then you're taking your chunkers and you're making, you know, a nice little, nice little fan shape. Um, I love to do really short tails, like the carrot tail, a lot of times, you know, I'll take, you know, a, uh, one of my guard combs and do the whole tail in a guard comb because I love short tails. But if they do want a fan, a lot of times you're just using your chunkers. I like my chunkers on the chin too, um, just because it's nice and safe. Um, and if you make a mistake, you know, you can, you can do your chin with any scissors you want, your curves. But I like the chunker because it takes off a good amount, but not too much. And if I make a mistake, um, it's easy to blend away. And you, you know you can always take off more you can never take off less <laughs> so chin and tail for our green zone blue blue zone feet and ears ear tips that's zone five um that's down here that's how i'm going to shape my feet i like most of my dogs i like to do a nice round teddy bear shape and basically you're taking your comb you're combing out, down, out. I snip across. You know, I kind of take my fingers like this and I feel for where the nails end because uh, you don't want to hit nails with your scissors because you can, you know, knock little chunks out of your, little micro chunks out of your shears if you hit nails over and over again. So I like to find where my nails end. You know, cut straight across. Turn your scissors around the paw. One more cut. I flip them in my hand. Come around again. Then I flip the paw backwards. You know, straighten it out. And then make another snip down here. And that's, you'll do that on all four paws. 
And I also do my ear tips with my curves. Normally I will do these, you know, pretty much last thing of all, um, but I just made them blue because, you know, this is the tool that I use on the ear tips. So I like to come around like this. And uh, you will use these quite a bit in other areas too. You know, you'll straighten out. You'll catch, uh, you know, sticky outies with these, snip, snip everywhere. You know, you'll tidy up a lot with these. Um, but my main areas, I use these for my feet. That's our blue. Zone six is purple. And that's going to be our purple zone. Um, I use uh, one length longer than my body, just, just in the same way as I use the shorter blade on the undercarriage. I use a longer blade on the top of the head uh, just because I have the time to use three different lengths on the tog. Um, and I like to have my head nice and fluffy, just a little bit fluffier. You know, you don't always do that. You could technically do, you know, your entire head, your entire body, and your entire undercarriage um, with one guard count. But I work for myself and I have the time to, you know, use three different lengths all over the body. So I like to do one length longer on my head. And obviously, as I said before, you're going with the grain of the hair. So you're starting here and across. I come down my ears. And when I'm doing the top of the ears, I hold it nice and flat to my hand and down the ear. You want to make sure that the leather of the ear doesn't slip, you know, inside your teeth at all. Um, the, pretty much the only instance where you would cut a dog, a dog's ear with a 30 blade is if you're using a broken blade, which if you're using broken blades, I just, I don't recommend it at all. If you break a blade, I don't care if you took it out of the package five minutes ago. If you break a 30 blade, just throw it in the garbage because you can nick a dog's ear right open with a 30 blade. So come right down the ears, down my ears, nice and flat. Make sure nothing, none of your ear flap is slipping between your uh, slipping between your teeth because you know even if it did slip between your teeth as long as your blade's not broken the only thing you're really gonna do is cut it as short as the 30 blade so you don't want to leave any like make any super short little lines so nice and flat and then I lift up my ear I come down the side of the face down the side of the face the little cheek and then a lot of times I will come right on the muzzle with my longer blade a lot you know sometimes i do i'll use a shorter blade on the muzzle um you can you know once you get the basic gist of it you can do whatever length you want but i will often just hit the muzzle zip zip with this guy right here that's our purple zone and brown zone zone seven this is a 10 blade. This is my ceramic 10 blade. Uh, where's my lens? I hope you can see. Um, it didn't come out in the last video, but the ceramic is, has white teeth on the back, and my other one has metal teeth on the back. And I just do that because I like the ceramics, and it's because I can tell them apart. As I've mentioned a couple times, I have two different two different 10 blades. I use one 10 for my sanitary, um, but now I'm, I wouldn't take this 10 blade that I've used on the butthole and the pee in areas, wouldn't take that. And then for obvious reasons, put it right on the dog's eyes. Um, you wanna keep things nice and clean and safe. So I have a separate 10 blade that I use for the corners. You know, I, they call it eye notching. And you're coming into the corner and down, into the corner and down. And you're coming right down the nose. Now, as I mentioned, as soon as you, as soon as you turn this blade reverse against the grain, you are going to be going, a, you know, two lengths shorter uh, than you would be if you were going with the grain. Um, so you always want to keep that in mind when you're coming down the nose, because if they have white or really thin hair, you can just skim. them. <laughs> It'll be way too short. And if that's the case, you know, once you start to learn your your, your hair types. Um, sometimes I'll use a seven blade to come down my nose just to leave a little extra length. But for the most part, our brown area, eye notching, scoop, scoop, and then down the nose. Eye notching, braided nose, and then black. 
Last one is going to be the brow and the finishing. So you've done all this with your, you know, except for the area right in front of the eyes with your uh, purple, your uh, your one one snap. Then you're going to take your comb. And you're going to comb this all forward. Comb your eyebrow forward. Then you're coming straight across with your thinning shears. And then I do a lot of corner work. Snip, snip. Right here on the top of the muzzle. Snip, snip. You know, you'll also use a little bit of this down here. There's a lot of wet, always going to be a lot of wet hair right here by the mouth. Um, so you'll use your thinning shears down here a lot and all this area. And then there's one little area um, that's going to be right in the corner of the mouth where you know it tucks in right underneath the canine that uh, is always going to be longer than the rest of it so because just because it tucks in so what I always do on every dog is I lift up the the jowl here and I pull that little area down and I uh, snip it shorter because you'll notice when you can't you don't notice it with when the dog's mouth is closed but when he opens his mouth to pant or something you will notice this little corner is going to be longer than the rest of it uh, in the rest of what you've done unless you pull that little section down and snip it shorter so I always make sure to hit that little tiny area and you always you know you can you'll do this five times you know scoop 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 all that stuff that gets stuck in their mouth you know it's always gonna be wet pull down you know snip 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 comb down comb up snip 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 I don't know you'll do that a couple times just to make sure that you get everything and obviously you want to be really careful because there are a lot of times moving around, especially in the corners of the eyes, you'll be really careful. And then anything by the mouth, the most important thing to remember is to keep an eye out for their tongue sticking out. A lot of times they lick their lips when you're working and eat puppies, oh, especially puppies, like they want to sniff and lick everything you're doing. And if everything you're doing involves sharp scissors, you can cut their tongue. Um, I've done that. Two or three times which is it's it ruins your entire day so and i always keep you know when i'm holding their chin i always keep the back of my thumb oh, my hands are getting dyed from the dog <laughs> um, i keep the back of my thumb right here on the neck and usually before they stick their tongue out to lick uh, or before they get ready to lick or stick their tongue out they tend to swallow first or at least make a move with their mouth which you can usually feel with your thumb so you know keep an eye out keep a feel out rather for them to stick their tongue out and also you can take your when you're doing your scissor work you can gently hold their mouth and then put a finger right here like especially when you're doing this area snippity snip snip you'll hold that finger you know you're not you're not squeezing their mouth shut um, but you are putting your finger right under the nose and right over the corner of the mouth um, right where it goes up in your little cute triangle, right here, so you can hold that tongue in. Make sure that they're not sticking their tongue out for you, and then you can go ahead and feel safe about snip, snip, snipping. Um, yeah, and uh, you'll use you'll use your thinning shears. They're they're for shaping. You'll use these all over the body. Um, you know, to finish, I finish my feet a lot with these. Snippity snip. Like you know, these are your two basic blue and black zones. Um, but you'll you'll use your shears. Every I use these a lot around the corners to do some blending, you know, my tail, if I didn't get all my blending done with my chunkers, I'll do this, I'll use these a lot. So yeah, that is the uh, intro to our eight zones, our eight zone pattern, and I hope that's super useful. And now, like I said, uh, this video is going to get a little bit long, but I really feel that it's, it's going to be really valuable, and you know, I really feel if you uh, study it, you can be you can be a really great groomer so yeah let's dive right in to the haircut on our real dog thanks Rowan you did great alrighty everyone this is our real dog this little angel's name is honey and she's gonna help us out today um, so I'm gonna try not to talk too much while the uh, clippers are going just because I don't think it you can hear me very well um, so, as we said, we are going to start with zone one, which is our two snap. Um, 
Now, honey has already been washed, dried, and combed out. And I have also already trimmed under her feet and her nails. So all that prep work is already done. You'll notice that uh, the comb goes through her nice and smoothly. There are no tangles in her. Um, these snap-on combs will not work very well, or sometimes at all, if there are tangles. So if you're going to use them, just make sure, you know, that your comb glides right through and there are no tangles. All right, let's get started with zone one, which is our red zone. And she doesn't have too much to take off at all. This will just be a little trim. She gets groomed pretty regularly. So, clippers facing the direction of the hair growth. And we're gonna do the body and the top of the legs. Here we go. Now a lot of times they will struggle for their front legs, so uh, just be extra gentle around the front legs. And if they uh, do give you a, a harder time, um, don't hold them by the foot. Try to hold them right up here gently by the elbow, and then you can kind of just, not squeeze, but put a tiny bit of pressure right here at the elbow, and you see her foot kind of straighten out. She doesn't fight, but some of them, you just kind of, it's always better to hold them a little bit by the elbow because you don't want them pulling a little wrist or twisting their elbow at all, so. And a lot of times when I'm coming down the leg, um, I will move the clippers and their leg at the same time. So you'll see, you'll see you watch. And just pull the leg up a little. Most dogs are just fine with that move. And then you can kind of come right down on the top of the foot without them even really noticing. And for this kind of coat, I'm making, you know, shorter moves with the clippers. Some of them you'll take a nice long move, all motion all the way down, but for her coat, I'm making, I'm gonna be making shorter, shorter moves. Down the leg, hold by the elbow. Down the leg. A lot of times I'll uh, pop the loop off for the neck. I'll just do it. I'll pop the loop off, and most of them do just fine with that, but if they're really squiggly, um, just leave the loop on. But she's good. I lift up my ear. Come down the neck. This. Lift my ear out of the way and down the neck. And that's on one, guys. For zone two, orange, we have our four snap. 
which, as I mentioned, is one length shorter. And I'm going to start right back here. I like this whole booty area to be much shorter. And then I come down the inside of the leg. And as I mentioned, for a lot of dogs, I like to come this little square right here. Um, I like to do it nice and short. So right here, I will do a reverse. As I mentioned, always uh, with the grain of the coat, unless you want it to be two lengths shorter, which I almost always do right here in this spot. So. Lift up the leg. Reverse. Now I'll do the inside of the front leg and the chest. Inside of the front leg. Inside of the front leg. Reverse. And sometimes um, I will even put my clippers right underneath her and come down the inside of the leg um, from another angle too, just like this. Lift up the foot, whoop. They don't even notice. And you will notice um, that instead of moving the dog all the way around, I am moving my own self around the dog. The less you can manipulate them, the, the more still they will stand for you. I'm gonna pop this off and then I'm going to do her neck and throat. So yes, this is our undercarriage. And I hold her right here by the chin, just gently, don't squeeze. And uh, most dogs are uh, pretty good with this move, so I'm gonna take these three fingers right here, grab her by the feet, and I'm gonna lift her up, 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 elevate her up, and uh, I'm gonna do the rest of her belly and then the undercarriage. And you'll notice that I am going to flip my clippers and do a little bit of reverse work too. Down the belly. Nice and short. Short, short, short. Oops, okay. That is zone two. Orange. Zone three, very important zone. Yellow. Sometimes I'll just lift up their butt and blow the hair off. So this is our sanitary, zone three. So I'm gonna take our uh, 10 blade, our metal 10 blade, lift up the tail. I start parallel and then I move horizontally, right on their butt. Nice and safe. And then I lift up her leg. And I'll come across her little rosebud there. As you can see, it's very safe. I'm gonna, and I'm, you can see I'm, uh, I'm holding onto her tail at the same time. Same thing, lift up. And across. Then I will grab the tail again. 
lift, come all the way forward. And I hope this is all in frame. <laughs> Scoop, scoop, scoop. Scoop, scoop, scoop. All this hair off of her little rosebud. And I come all the way up. Another part of our sanitary is the armpit. Right here by the wrist, not by the paw. Always by the wrist. You want as much of their leg in your hand as possible because if they jump and twist, um, you don't wanna you know, pull a muscle or injure a ligament or anything. Like I said, you always wanna be very careful about manipulating joints. She's not overweight, she's fairly young, you know, she's got good muscle tone, so she can, she can have her legs manipulated quite a bit. But if you're working on any sort of older, obese, anything like that, luxating patellas, you'll, you know, you'll have to be, you'll have to be really aware. So, we're gonna lift up our arm, and scoop, right in the arm, all the way, the, you know, you're stopping just under the elbow, like I said. May seem, may seem like a little much, but you know, they absolutely cannot see them. I've never had a complaint. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Snip, 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 snip. And our armpits again, up. There we go. And then I will take her sanitary on the belly, to the belly. Same move as the undercarriage. Up, 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 up. And I'll 10 blade all this. Now as you can see, her nipples are right here and this 10 blade is very safe. And another little spot sometimes you have to watch out for is right here in their little spay area. Sometimes it can, you know, have a little extra skin. So just be, just be careful. But. Do, 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 do. All right, that is our sanitary zone. Now, we will move on to zone four, which is our tail. And we're gonna use our chunkers. We're doing a fan tail on her. So I take my comb, brush right down the middle. Now her tail's a little sparse because we had to shave a mat off last time, but it's okay. Comb straight down. And I'm just gonna take my chunkers and we're just taking off a little today. I just make my start line with the chunks. And then I kind of come on the side a little bit too. Shake it out. One more time, shake, shake, to catch any sticky outies. And there we go. And I know uh, part of zone four is the chin with these, um, but I'm gonna do her face last. There we go. Okay, we will now move on to zone five, which is blue. We're gonna make her little roundy feet with our curves, which are here. So, I'm gonna stand in front of her like this. I'm gonna hold her by the hock, which is right back here. Lift her foot. You know, don't have it way out here. Just right down here is fine. The less you can move them, the better. I comb down, I comb out, and out. I got my scissors, I take these fingers, I find her nails, so I don't hit them with my scissors. And I just make one snip straight across and then I just come around the side. Like I said, we're, there's hardly anything to take off of her, so. And it's one footy. And you can kinda, you know, trim off any other sticky outies that you notice. Comb down. Hold her by the hawk. Straighten out a little of this. And then I like to bring this right to the pad, nice and short on the feet. 
Here's one. Same thing. Oopsies, whack the camera. Hope you can still see everything. Comb down, comb to the side, comb to the side. Like I said, a lot of dogs will fuss over their feet, so just be careful. Find my nail. I'm kind of uh, finding my nail and pulling the hair out at the same time. There we go. Just a little. Trim this. Trim, trim, trim. There we go. Straighten this leg a little. Same on the other side. And uh, <clears throat> normally I would uh, take my blow dryer and blow the hair off, but it's just too loud to do that while I'm trying to film. Comb down and out and out. Find my nails, straight across. Do a little trimming right here. Nice, round, teddy feet. Straighten this out. And I'm not sure that the other camera was on for that, so we'll just go around one more time. Snippity snip. Cute little round feet. Oh, did we skip this one? We did. <laughs> Normally I don't skip them, but I'm trying to, you know, manage the cameras at the same time. <laughs> right up to the pad. Round. And we missed a little here. So I'll go up with my scissors. And always, don't be afraid to use your scissors. You can always, you can straighten anything out that you need to with these curves. Snip, snip, snip. Okay. Easy peasy. And that is all there is to zone five. Zone six, I'll bring her over here. Is our head and our cheeks. That is our purple zone. I'm gonna put our 30 blade back on. And we're gonna get our one snap, which is one length longer than our body. We're gonna Hold her by the chin, very gently. You don't need to pull on her. And then we're gonna follow the direction of the hair again. This is kind of a lighter scan. I'm gonna lift up her ear. Now you notice that she, this particular dog, she kind of likes to tilt her head a little bit, which isn't too big of a problem until you're doing her chin. So I kind of have to like straighten her head out to make sure I got everything right. Um, but you're gonna take these fingers and you're gonna be holding her ear back so that her ear doesn't fall in your way. And you're gonna come right down her cheek. You're gonna do the other side. Hold her ear back, just like this. Right down the cheek. I'm just gonna pop the loop off for a second. Now, as I mentioned, when you go in reverse, it's gonna be two lengths shorter than when you're going with the hair. So in this case, this is a one snap half inch. Um, when you go in reverse, it is the same exact length as this guy right here, which is handy because I will do her chin two lengths shorter and I, so I will go in reverse. I'm gonna lift up her neck. I'm gonna come right up her chin all the way up here. The only thing I leave for my cute, my cute little faces 
is just right here because this is where mats get so I don't leave a lot under their neck. I go really short on their neck. So. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All the way up. One more. Okay. That is all there is. Two zones. Okay, we're not going to do puppy ears on her. I'm going to, we'll do a little bit longer, but if we were we'd, doing a puppy cut, we'd be coming right down the ear as well. So. So we're going to put the loop back on her. We're going to do seven, zone seven brown, which is eye notches and nose, which as I mentioned, ceramic 10 blade, it's white. So I don't use my butt blade on my eyes because you don't want to, you know, mucous membranes, people, mucous membranes. <laughs> you don't want to put a poop blade right on their eye. So this could get, this can be scary at first, um, but you can get used to it. So we'll do her eye notches, which we get all this uh, gunky out of the corner here. Um, so I take my cord and make sure I wrap my cord up around my shoulder um, so that it doesn't bonk her in the nose. So we start, you know, with this corner and we just scoop right downwards. Right down the nose, across, and down. You can, you can blow lightly to get the hair out of the way, but some dogs really don't appreciate you blowing in their faces. But, come here, let me see. Scoop, scoop. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Good girl, you're being so brave. Good girl. That's all there is to it. Like I said, that can get pretty scary, um, but most of them are pretty good for it, like she is. Yeah, yeah, you're so good. And we'll do one more. That's all there is for uh, zone seven. And zone eight, thinning shears and finishing. So uh, Honey gets a little bit of a longer brow her owners like a little bit of fluff up here. So I don't take it down quite as short as I would on most dogs. You see how she's tilting her head a little bit? It's really not much of an issue. I just have to make sure I like tilt her back at the end of the groom to make sure that it's even. So we're gonna comb her brow forward. All this, comb her cheeks forward. Do, do, do. Comb, comb. And we're gonna take our thinning shears and we're just gonna come straight across and make a nice, tidy brow. Nice, tidy brow, all this. Tidy, tidy. Obviously, you are using extremely sharp scissors near their eyes, so you just wanna be careful. And I also kind of fluff this up a little. Snip, 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 right across like that. And sometimes I'll get right in there with the scissors if they let me and just do a little extra snipping. Like I said, that gets really scary, but you do get used to it. And you know, when you're doing this part, you wanna hold their chin nice and tightly. You know, you're not squeezing her skin. I'm not pulling on her, um, but I am holding her tight because if she hears something and moves her face right into my scissors, you can snip the top of their nose, which unfortunately, I have done and it ruins your day. So I'll do a little bit. And as I mentioned, uh, for let's see, zone six, you can take the one snap here that we did on the top of the head and you can just, you can just do this a little bit. Not much, she doesn't need too much. She's getting a very light trim. So then I will uh, comb her chin forward her cheekies and her chins forward. And then I'm gonna use my chunkers. I'm gonna hold her by the nose, just like this. And I'm gonna pull all this hair forward and my thumb is down here underneath her neck. Um, and I'm just gonna come straight across with my chunkers. And we're gonna do a nice little roundy face. So straight under, just like the feet. And then I come up the side. 
just do nice and roundies. You see how that just blends? Like I said, you're, you're, you know, it's more than okay to use your curves on the nose, but I just love chunkers. I just think they're safer. Hold her by the muzzle, comb down. Nice little roundy rounds. You know, you'll do this a few times, you know, you'll come forward and snip, comb forward and snip. You'll do it a couple times. Hold her by the nosy. Up around the cheekies. And then this gooey stuff, I like to make sure I come back and get all that. And that I will get with my ceramic 10 blade. Just like that. Yeah, there we go. Now, those two spots that I mentioned for the finishing, I really hope this comes out because this is pretty important. Um, it's this corner right here. You see, 90% of the time it's darker than the rest of the hair where it tucks under that canine. So I always lift out of the way, pull it down, and I hold it with my hand. Like I said, they're actually usually really good for this even though your finger's in their mouth. I hold it down, you see how it's longer than the rest? I just even it out. I always even out that brown spot. Other side, lift up, find it, it's always darker. Pull down, hold it. Snip, 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 snip. Here we go. So you can't see it when her, uh, you can't see that spot when her mouth is closed, but when she opens her mouth to pant, you can see it. So, and I'll just hold up her ear. I'll do some snippy snips right here. Just even all this out. Like I said, part of my sanitary is to, uh, I don't pluck the ears, I trim them with a 10 blade. See, she has almost nothing. So I just pull this forward, I take my ceramic 10, and I just, tr I just trace the inside of the ear. And that generally gets rid of enough. Lift up. I just pull it out. Like I said, she's still got some in there, but I just don't feel. Like if I were plucking her ears regularly, if I were taking my Rawson powder and uh, ripping that hair out, there's absolutely no way she would be letting me touch her ears right now. So I just do this, just like that. There is some risk in nicking some of these tiny areas, um, but I use a nice safe 10 blade and that's literally just never happened. So, you know, we'll go around again. I, and these little sticky outies always kind of miss those with your 10 blade. So I pull these up just like this and hold her chin nice and tight. You know, like I said, don't pull on her, but nice and tight so she doesn't move on you. Come down the lips, snip, snip. And then I take my comb and I get this and this, and I get these, all these little mouthy sticky outies. Now, remember I was talking about that tongue? I'm gonna hold her by the chin. I'm gonna put my finger right in front of her mouth so she doesn't stick her tongue out when I'm doing these little wet bits. Just like this, snip, snip, snip. There. Okay, and that's really all there is for the face. Obviously this is a really quick trim, so you'll probably have a lot more to do um, when you're you know, doing a, a big full groom, but this is our gist. So we're just gonna trim her ears a little. This is actually, uh, Green zone, green, uh, green zone, which is zone four, but I'm doing it, I do it last. I just wanted to keep the zones uh, matching the tools. So I'm gonna comb, make sure there are no tangles. Hold it with my finger like this a couple times. And then I'm just gonna go straight across the bottom with my chunkers. And that 
gives it a nice blended. You see how if she hears a car, she turns her head. So you just gotta be always, you can't be brewing half hungover with your phone in your hand. Like you really have to be paying attention to the animal. So, so I just took a little off and then the one spot that usually comes out uneven is right here in the back. So I flip her ear over and I just take off a little extra on this back corner because those are the ones that usually stick right out. <laughs> then I make funny noises so she looks at me. <laughs> okay, one more ear. Comb down. Across again and up. I shake it out, flip. This is usually the spot that sticks out, and I just take that corner down a little more. I let her shake her little ears out, and I make funny noises so that hopefully she'll look at me. Just push her back a little bit, there we go. So, and I notice, you know, just a couple things. So once again, oh, you know, you'll do this like five times. I comb forward. Comb the whole face towards me. Clean your shears out. Snip, 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 snip. Lift up her ear, under here. And this is what I meant by finishing. You know, you'll, you'll go all over her body. And I always like to make sure this area is nice and short so you can take her ear and I pull this out because this stuff gets matted a lot. So take that down a little bit. Blend with the neck. Turn her head over here on this side. So this is all finishing work. Lift her ear. See all this can come off. Yeah. There we go, perfect. And then when I'm, you know, normally I would finish a little bit more, but I'm just trying to be a little speedy. So after I'm all done with the cut, I'll uh, take my blow dryer and I'll blow her all off so I can uh, just uh, get all the hair off the table and uh, find any little sticky outies that I may have missed. And if I did miss anything, I will uh, go over them again. Lower up. Ooh. Good job, baby girl. So, yeah, that's that is pretty much the gist. And uh, when I'm, like I said, when I blow her off, I find any little sticky outies that I may have missed. And I'm gonna put my two snap back on, and uh, I will just go over her again. Actually, I'll. and if she's wiggly on you. You can put a second clip on her like this. She doesn't usually need it. She's not too wiggly, obviously. So and then I just, uh, so I'm gonna go over her a second time just to catch any, uh, you get a really nice fine finish if you do this a couple times. Um, and there is a tool you can use called a clipper back. It's a fair, you know, not, not super expensive, but uh, it's basically cl clippers attached to a vacuum. Um, that's pretty helpful and you kind of helps you to not have to go over the coat three times but I don't really like the clipper backs much. I've made more mistakes with a clipper back than just going over the coat with my guard comb an extra time or two, so. You did so good, honey. Yes, you did. You know, and you can kind of 
use your shears in a lot of different ways. I know there are, you know, certain patterns you're supposed to follow with your wrist, but in real life, that just doesn't always happen. You have stuff in your way, the dog is moving, so as long as it's fairly safe, you can use it most ways on most goats. And all right guys, that is uh, our haircut, our basic uh, introduction to the eight zone pattern and our basic summer cut on honey hair. And uh, yeah, that, uh, that should wrap it up for us. Honey, you did so great. concludes my video on the eight zone pattern theory and basic haircut. If you're enjoying my content, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to contribute to my work directly, you can go right to my Facebook page, Lizzie Cole Lapiana. I'll put it right there and you can hit the little dollar sign button. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.